Thank you very, very much. I have to say, and this is an honest confession, while watching your farewell speech in Melbourne, I have to say, I was tearing up. And I think there was a sort of collective joy, euphoria for a lot of women who saw you walk away from that court and walk away with your son in attendance as well, leaving that court with you to say, boy, she played it her way. And congratulations to you, Thank you. for that. Thank you. Yeah, it was very important for me to, um, well, it, it is very important for me in life to do things on my own terms. And if anybody's followed any part of my career or my life, they would know that, that I, that I kind of, I'm all heart and uh, very little brain most of the time. But um, I want to do things that are, that I feel I can blame myself for it or give credit to myself. I don't like other people things or people being in control of it. So people were like, are you crazy? Like, you just played a final of a Grand Slam. Why are you retiring? And I said, because I don't think that um, the level of tennis was really my problem. The motivation to actually be at that level was the issue after 20 years. I mean, I turned pro in 2003, we're in 2023. So I was like, I don't look that old, but I am old. <laughs> So, you're not uh, old. <laughs> for a tennis player, I'm ancient, trust me. My, my bones will tell you and my joints will tell you that. So, um, no, but it was so special because I never in my life thought that I would play a final of a Grand Slam in front of my four-year-old son. And to me, that was very, very special to, to have him there, to, for him to understand. Because now he's old enough, he's four and a half, so he understands winning and losing. And he understands, I don't think he really understands, like, he knows that we're different as a family. Like, I don't think he understands what exactly is different. What his mother does. <laughs> or his father, for that matter. <laughs> so he's like, you know, he understands there's something different. Like, why do people come and take pictures and like stuff like that? But he doesn't really understand why which is fine, um, you know, so, but it was very special for me. You know, I, I don't know how many of you have uh, followed Sanya's career, but I, I think uh, that there's a beautiful piece, and if you haven't read it, you must, uh, by Rohit Bridgnath, uh, who's done this fabulous piece on you, and I, I love the headline because it says, the unforgettable defiance of Sanya Mirza, and I think that really sums up your story, doesn't it? But was the defiance by design, or was the defiance by accident? No, actually, the defiance by, was by default, really, <laughs> because um, there was no other choice at that point. You know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, I was a soul ranger um, who was, you know, this young uh, girl from Hyderabad, from this, you know, uh, middle class family, dreaming of playing Wimbledon, playing against the Serena Williams of the world and the Martina Hingis of the world. And uh, people thought we were crazy. And I don't blame them for thinking we were crazy, but because we had a crazy dream as a family. And um, they laughed at us and they were like, oh, okay, well, I, then when I got to, I started playing when I was six, when I was about 12, you know, the aunties and uncles and the mamas and mommies, they were like, oh, yeah, but, you know, she's, she's getting dark, like, you know, who's going to marry her? Like, I mean, that's a, that's a thing every subcontinent girl can the relate question, to. The yeah. question that has killed many <laughs> dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> who's going to marry her? And I'm like, at 12, I remember thinking, I think I'll be okay, you know, like, I think I'll find someone. Um, so, um, we went from cultural and society, um, you know, abnorms, defying those then you went on to like having no system in place to actually defying that so it was by default it was not like we were sitting there and we we're like okay we're gonna go all against all odds we had no choice if we wanted to make it or try to make it uh, we had to go against the odds you know uh, i mean being a sports person in india is hard being a sports person at the level that you've been able to achieve is harder because the the system isn't geared up to support you. Uh, there is no infrastructure, whether it's mentors, coaches, funding. I mean, all of that is really hard to come by. And I've heard this from a lot of people, that it really is your own motivation. It's your own sort of personal dream. And it is your uh, you know, family and friends who are sort of really helping you uh, push your way forward. If you were to look back today and try and make changes that would help other Sanya Mirzas, uh, be able to live this dream. What do you believe is the need of the hour today? 
Well, I, I mean, I just want to tell you that being a sports person is hard, which is outside of cricket. Because yeah. being in cricket, there is a system in place and, and there is a very good system. Now we have a system for badminton as well, which is why you see so many champions coming out. And that's just like that proves to you that the minute there's a force behind you um, and there are people to go to and people to help out, you can produce them. It really doesn't have to do with anything else. Um, and put in being a woman is even harder, you know, because you're not just fighting a lot of the stuff on the court, you're fighting so many things off the court, um, you know, because you're doing things that are outside of the box that are, I mean, I don't think when a girl is born, the first thought that comes to most people's heads in our side of the world is like, oh, let's make her a, you know, sports. Uh, oh, let's make her anything. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know about anything, but I, <laughs> but I, I don't that's think that they're thinking that's that, that reality let's for many. Make her, yeah, yeah, let's make her a boxer or a tennis player. I mean, that is changing. So um, in tennis, I mean, I would love to be involved more in terms of actually, um, you know, right now we have this girl called Karman Thandi, who is, uh, you know, supposed to be our next best thing. Um, she's about 250 in the world and she's very talented. She's got everything. She's six feet tall. I mean, if I, I was like, I wish I had your height, I would have been top 10, not top, you know, top 30 in singles. So. Um, I tried to help her, she was here in Dubai. So I wanna do more on-ground stuff like that, where I actually feel I'm making a difference, where I can share my experience, share what I have been through. Um, you know, yesterday she sent me her schedule and she's like, what do you think I should play? So I wanna do that kind of stuff. But I also want to get involved a little bit in the system because we need change. Um, and who better than the people that have actually mm. played the game and experienced everything to bring that change and to actually um, say that, no, this is not right. This is not how we're going to produce it. I mean, if, if we keep going the way we are, we're going to have a champion every 30 years, which we do, you know, and that's not because of the system, that's despite of the system. Mm. So, you know, so that's, those are the things that, so I have my tennis academies, for example, so that is one way of doing it, where we're trying to nurture kids, we're trying to start a tennis league over here in UAE, where we're trying to, like, get the local, uh, you know, kids who don't have that much exposure to come out and play um, a, tournaments, to play matches, to get the feeling of winning and losing. So all this stuff is part of a system. Hmm. So, but as an individual, there's only so much I can do. I need to get inside a system to actually create a change. So is uh, getting inside the Indian system, how, how hard do you believe that's going to be harder than winning a Grand Slam? <laughs> I think I'm going to pass this question. <laughs> you know, I, I think that um, if you get inside anything for the right reasons, I think it's worth a fight. For me, that's what I believe. That's how I've lived my life. And if you want to do anything that uh, is going to create something better, or the attempt to create something better. So it is going to be hard. I'm not saying, I don't want anybody's seat. I don't want to get inside a system where I'm like, oh my God, let me take this guy out and I'll be, that, that's not my plan because I really don't need that. And I don't have time for that. I'm a full-time working mother, you know? Uh, so, but um, it's more about actually trying to have um, young girls and young boys believing and saying, oh, today I want to go and I want to train a certain place. Where do I go? Who do I call? I want to be that call. I want to be that person who they can come to and be like, so Rohan Bopanna is doing his bit. I'm doing his bit. Mahesh is done. You know, so we're all trying to do it little by little. And hopefully it'll come together. Well, I, I, I hope that there, I mean, there would, I, I would imagine young girls wanting to make that call to Sanya Mirza to understand a little bit of, uh, of your process, your method, uh, your madness and your magic. I mean, what an experience that would be for somebody who's trying to get into the game. But, you know, we've got a room full here of startup founders, entrepreneurs. In many ways, there are parallels between the journey that you've had and the journey that they're on because it's high intensity, it's high pressure, it's a lot of passion, it's all heart. Uh, but, you know, how have you been able to cope with the ups and downs? And there's been plenty of them. Uh, you know, what is the coping mechanism? Is, is, there, is, is, there, is there something that you've been able to design over the course of the years that's helped you to get through the really rough patches? I think the belief, I think that is probably what I'll say, is probably the, um, the biggest strength that you can have, belief in yourself. And if you're not your biggest cheerleader, God knows there's nobody else out there because especially as young girls, um, you know, and, and playing a sport, like I'm just trying to draw a parallel. Anytime you start trying to start doing something new, you're more often told you cannot do something than you can. 
you know and that is just how it works that's the, that's the nature that we live in and the society we live in the minute you say i want to do something outside of but what makes you think you you can do it nobody's ever done it i mean yeah nobody's ever been number one in the world from our country but i got there you know so that is the belief that you need to have that you are um you know how to become the best version of yourself how to get the best out of yourself and i mean i've been through obviously as you know like any other athlete has been through so many we we lose on a weekly basis and we have to come back you know in a draw of of 32 or 64 that we play every week there's only one winner everybody else loses so everybody at any given point has lost a match that week except the person who's won the tournament and some people win a tournament once a, once a year some people win a tournament if you're Novak Djokovic 10 times a year but not everybody is Novak Djokovic you know so you go through those and you have to keep believing in yourself you have to believe in not just your ability but you have to believe in the work that you've put in the um, you know you the kind of um, um background search you've done about things that you want to achieve you have to believe in your team you know and the team needs to believe in you so it it's a, it's a huge team effort but it's also self belief so that's what i think got me through most of my lull so to say you know i remember you you said once and i it's it's important again it it seems like a uh, like a comment that is a nice headline but there's there's a lot of truth to that you said that uh, especially as a woman you have to learn to develop a thick skin um uh, it's not easy right i mean you know you're you're in in the public eye you're being scrutinized you're being judged you're being evaluated every single decision of yours on the court off the court is up for discussion and national debate uh, how do you develop that thick skin where you say it's okay for me to make the choices that i'm making without seeking external validation actually at 36 today i can tell you that it's a lot easier but trust me when you put a 16 year old that's when i first had my first twist with media um you know and i'm like oh my god like all my friends are just worried about how to bunk school and meet boys in a coffee shop and i'm here sitting in front of a you know press conference and they're asking me questions about world and i'm like what am i doing you know it's very difficult because you you're almost thrown in into this this world that you're not ready for you are not you don't know who you are as a 16 17 18 year old you're still trying still trying to discover who you are discover yourself you're trying to i mean you have pimples on your face you're a little overweight here and there and there's comments about everything and it's very difficult as a young girl growing up to that in a complete you know like you feel almost naked um in many ways so it's very difficult um and um at 36 though i find humor in it <laughs> for most part of it um unless there'll be a day when i'll get up from the wrong side of the bed and i'm like you know what i'm going to reply to this guy but most of the time i find humor in it and and uh, that's the way to deal with it because you know in today's day of social media and media where we are so exposed as public figures we are so exposed all the time like and and it's by choice i've put myself in this position so i'm if i'm going to take the pros of the, being in the media and in the spotlight i have to accept the cons and that's an acknowledgement i need to make but it's a lot easier for me with experience of so many years to say i can do that so thick skin being thick skin is very important funny enough i'll tell you a story yesterday i was i was on a flight to mumbai and um, uh harleen adiol who's a 24 year old cr- cricketer the women's world cup cricket team was coming back and she was sitting right next to me i actually didn't know her name i knew she was a cricketer because i saw her and she started talking to me and uh, she was so sweet and she was so nice and she started asking me you know just these questions because i've also signed with a cricket league just yeah. now so yeah. she was like i'm so excited you're coming to cricket and she was i mean she was so young and uh, i said oh, you know bad luck you guys lost you had a solid tournament in the semi final and she was like yeah but the media they were killing us they were just they were so after us and she's like it's been four days since they lost and she was like mai abhi bhi soch rahi hu didi pata nahi you know they're still they're still talking about how badly we played and i said but if you're going to let if you're going to take four days to get over a loss harleen is going to become very difficult for you like trust me you need to take a night and you need to get over it because that's the only way athletes can work so these are the kind of athletes that's the pressure you feel when you're 24 you know where she's thinking about it for four days she's sitting on a plane and she's like i'm going for ipl now but they're still imagine i have to face the media and it's so it is something that all athletes deal with and i think people sometimes forget 
that we are human. Um, they forget that we have, we feel emotion, we're in a high pressure job um, all the time, you know. Uh, if you have a bad day, maybe you'll know about it, maybe your family will know. If we have a bad day, the entire world knows about it and they write about it and they have an opinion about it. And imagine dealing with that as a young, um, you know, young 24 year old, 22 year old with that much spotlight on you. So you have no choice but to be thick skinned because if you let it get to you, you're not going to get there. I promise you, you're not going to get there because you'll have multiple breakdowns in on the way and especially today with the way media is. Sanya, you know, you talked about your foray into the cricket world. Tell us a little bit more about that. So this is, in, in a way, your startup journey as well. Yeah, it, uh, it is. I actually, um, yeah, I'm very excited because, um, you know, when, when RCB approached us and I had just announced my retirement and, um, first of all, we were so excited that there's finally a women's league and, you know, these girls are going to get so much exposure. And then RCB approached us and I was like, I know nothing about cricket. I mean, I've been around cricket all my life, obviously, by default, but I literally know nothing about cricket. And they're like, we need... We do not need you for cricket. We need you to talk about this. Like what, you know, the conversation that I had with Harleen, that's the conversation that, and I was like, you know what, like, this is it. This is the change that we are looking for, where we have someone who's, like, I was able to have that experience over the last 20 years. And if I'm able to help these girls cope with that pressure and cope with that spotlight and cope with the amount of money running on them, because when, when the money rises, everything else rises, right? And the pressure rises and the criticism rises and the opinions rise. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I, sure, it'll be interesting. Um, and also I'm excited to get to know these girls. They're all so young, they're 23, 24, 25 years old. They're playing for their countries. So I was like, yeah, this is, this is my cup of tea where I want to talk to young girls, young athletes of today. Um, especially from our country, who are the tomorrow, and, and uh, try and help them cope with that, even if take off a little bit of pressure from them dealing with wins and losses and dealing with people criticizing them for what they wear and how they look. <laughs> Which is very often. So <laughs> coach Sanya or mentor Sanya, no. that's, that's the space that you're playing in now? I'm mentor, not coach at all, actually. <laughs> there's coaches, there's a completely entire uh, different coaching team. I'm just in there for a little bit of a... Um, uh, mental and, and, and an aspect where I can actually share the experience that I've been uh, through. Um, because, um, you know, one of the other things is as women, and a lot of women will tell you, no matter what field they're in, we're first judged for the way that you look and then what you do, mm. you know? And that is any woman in any field will tell you that. Um, and uh, that's going to happen to these girls now. You know, that's going to happen and it's very unfortunate, but that's the reality of life. And, um, you know, women like you and I have to cope with that and, and try and counter that and be like, no, we're good at what we do first, you know, rather than what we look or how we look or what we wear. So those are things that I've obviously had first-hand experience <laughs> with many times. And yeah, so I w I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm actually joining the team in a couple of days. Well, we wish you the very best yeah, of luck with this thanks. new role and this new avatar that you're taking on. But Sanya, let's let's talk a little bit about tennis. You know, what have been the the, the most exciting matches that you've had? One or three or five, whatever that you'd like to list. So who's been the most fun that you've had playing with? Well, I think um, you know one of the uh, one of the first matches of my career when I was um, 18 years old was was against Svetlana Kuznetsova and and it was in Dubai actually. I, and it was just my first breakthrough year. She was the reigning US Open champion at that point. And I twisted my ankle uh, during the match and I was down for love. And I just popped a few painkillers pain and I was like, you know what, I can't play, I'm barely able to move. I don't know what happened. I just got in the zone and I won that match 6-4, 6-2. And even now, when I look back at that match, I'm like, I feel like I was possessed, like it was weird. And I was like, you know, I, I was seeing the ball like a watermelon, you know, and I was like, my God, I felt like I cannot miss the ball. And that zone as an athlete is what we work all our lives for, you know, that zone where you're just feeling like the court is too big and and there's nobody there and you're just hitting winners everywhere. And then that's a match that will stay with me forever, even though there's been some, so, so many more like greater matches and bigger occasions that I've been able to win at, but that match stays with me um, forever mm. as one of probably the greatest matches I have ever played. But what does it feel you know, when you're up on that podium, when the tricolor is going up, when the anthem is playing, what, how do you feel then? 
so the the first time that I played for, for the country, as I mean, I think that we play for the country all the time, but because, but because we're an individual sport, we're counted as playing for ourselves more than the country. But I mean, it says Sanya Mirza India. But anyway, that's a debate for another day. <laughs> but, but I, um, uh, the first time I played Fed Cup, which was a team event for India, was in 2001 or 2002. Um, so I was 14 years old. And uh, I actually probably didn't understand the magnitude of that feeling at 14. Um, but it truly, like, as years went by, I mean, playing at four Olympics and playing Asian Games, and I started playing, the first Asian Games that I played was in 2002. And I was 15 when um, I won that medal, you know, and we came back with a bronze medal. And that, I think, moment really was like, you know what, there's a national anthem going off because of what you've done. You know, there's a flag going up there because of what you've done. And there's a, that's a feeling I think I cannot do justice by describing in words. Because as people, our biggest joy is to represent our country in the best way possible. And um, as an athlete, that is the only thing that you can ever dream of is to play for your country and win for your country. I mean, playing is great. That's a dream for most people. But to win for your country and to know that there are things people are actually, everybody's looking up at the flag of your country's flag because of you is a very, very special. Let me end by asking you, you know, where do you see yourself now? What are the next goals that you've set for yourself? What is motivating you to get up and get out there in the morning now? I mean, the, uh, right this moment, I'm, I'm a person of very short-term goals and I don't really set goals like five years or ten years in advance and now... Uh, Right now, this morning, my goal was to wake up because I landed at 4.30 a.m. in the morning and I was like, I really need to get to this event and that's why I was late Thank by half an hour. By the way. <laughs> because I landed from Mumbai and I was like, I have to make it to this event and I, still I was late and I'm really sorry for that. But um, the um, my goals are, uh, like I said, I mean, like we spoke about, try and, uh, you know, help the younger generation in whatever way capacity, uh, whatever way possible for me if they need the help. Tennis, yes, but also other sports, other athletes. Um, I've actually just started uh, four uh, tennis centers here in Dubai. I have one running in Hyderabad, which is a huge academy. I'll get a little bit more actively involved in that because I've been on the tour for so long, but I'm actually starting getting into paddle a little bit. Um, I, I think everybody's told me it's really exciting to play, so I've only tried it once or twice. I suck, but I'm going to try and get better at that. Um, and to, yeah, actually, we're starting a new paddle center tomorrow as we speak in Dubai. So, who would you regard as the greatest of all time? Uh, in what? <laughs> whatever <laughs> you like. <laughs> tennis, life, whatever. No, in tennis, I, in tennis, I think that we cannot deny that the numbers are Novak Djokovic. I think that that is. Uh, uh, but if you ask me, my personal favorite is going to be Roger Federer. Um, I, I mean, I think we can debate about this. You'll need another hour here with the <laughs> amount of men in this room who'll debate about this Roger, Rafa, and Novak debate. But I think that um, just by numbers, I would say it's Novak Djokovic and Serena Williams. I mean, I don't think yeah. we should leave her out of this. No, absolutely. I was, in fact, I, I thought that would have been your first response would have been Serena Williams. I was just going by what I saw in the last one yeah. month. But no, I mean, Serena definitely. I've been a huge Steffi Graf fan. So for me, me yeah. So yeah. that. That's who I grew up on, yeah. and that's who I was like, nobody's greater than Steffi Graf, yeah. but then Serena is, <laughs> you know, she is. I mean, the numbers are, are there, so. Well, Sanya Mirza, thank you very much for being you, for your defiance, for the magic that you brought on court, and for staying so real <laughs> off court as well. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause thank you. for Sanya Mirza. Thank you very, thank very you. much. Thanks.